you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing something that I have not done in a little bit, which is bring you a brand new DIY. I hope you'll enjoy it. Before we get started, if you could do me a huge favor and click that like button, that'll let me know that you like these types of DIY videos. And if you think of any other types of videos you want me to do, leave a comment down below because I read everything and respond to everything. There were a lot of things I worked through in this project and even a major disaster towards the end. So make sure you stay till the end and give me a like if for nothing else but the patience that I had during this entire project. So you might be thinking, restoring a vintage trunk, how random. And it is pretty random, but the first video I saw that kind of got me thinking about doing something similar was Lone Fox's video where he took a vintage trunk and completely repainted the hardware, the canvas, everything. If you don't know who Lone Fox is, first of all, where have you been? And second of all, I will leave a link to that trunk video down below because you should definitely watch it along with all of his other videos. He does some great home decor videos. Now, like I said before, he completely repainted the outside of that trunk and made it look brand new, which is awesome. But it led me down a rabbit hole of videos on YouTube where people actually refurbish these trunks and sometimes even make them into coffee tables. Now I'm super into that vintage and industrial style of home decor, so I thought making a vintage trunk into a coffee table was the perfect mix of both. I knew I probably couldn't fit a whole vintage trunk coffee table in my small apartment, but I knew that someone out there would be looking for something like that. So I took myself over to your local online thrift shop. I'm talking about Facebook Marketplace, and I found this authentic vintage trunk that was selling for $30. I haggled my way down to 25 bucks. I drove myself into the middle of nowhere, Michigan to pick it up, no contact because COVID, and brought it home to figure out what exactly I wanted to do with it. So on my initial inspection of this trunk, I definitely saw that there was a lot of rust on the hardware. There was a lot of wear and tear on the actual canvas of the trunk. On the inside of the trunk, there were a couple of rips and tears of that paper lining. But honestly, I really loved the way that it looked. It looked used and well-loved, and that's what I wanted. Now, don't get me wrong, there was plenty of grime on this trunk, but I got to work figuring out how exactly I was going to transform this trunk into a coffee table. Just like any other DIY or upcycle of old furniture, I knew I had to immediately start with cleaning. I started off with a warm bucket of water, I mixed in some soap, and I used a toothbrush and a sponge to start scrubbing away the years of grime. I also ended up adding a little bit of TSP into that water soap mixture just to make sure everything was super clean. You really can't be too careful in the middle of the pandemic. And as you'll see here, this was the most tedious process that I have ever done. It took several cycles of cleaning every single surface of that trunk. The only difference with cleaning off the hardware of the trunk was I tried to use a little bit of CLR to get rid of some of that rust that had accumulated. I also used some steel wool on the hardware, again to try and get rid of some of that rust, but another problem that that actually ended up causing was it left behind little pieces of that steel wool all over the trunk, which meant more cleaning with regular water and soap. It was a vicious cycle of cleaning. This is after one round of cleaning it with CLR versus this, which is not clean. Can you see the difference? I can, I don't know if you can, but this one just looks way more rusty and dull, and then this one is super shiny. Still rusty, but shinier.
the trunk as much as humanly possible, I took out some tongue oil. I learned from the video that I linked down below that tongue oil is actually a great way to refinish the canvas, the wood, and some of the leather pieces that might be on your vintage trunk. So I just took a paintbrush and later a rag to speed up the process of putting it all over the trunk to refinish the canvas pieces. I tried my best to avoid the hardware and just focus on every other area of the trunk. I could immediately tell when I was doing this step that it really brought that old trunk back to life. Now be warned, this is an oil that you're rubbing all over the trunk, so it definitely left a little bit of an oily residue on top of it, but this went away in about a day, as soon as it was absorbed completely. After this step came a bunch of trials and tribulations that really tested my patience. Originally, I thought I wanted to do something special to the hardware because it wasn't perfect. It had a lot of dents and scratches. Some of the gold was fading away in certain parts. Some of the little circular bolts that were all over the trunk were completely rusted over. And the hardware pieces were really leading to the trunk looking old and worn down. So there were a bunch of things that I tried to do to the hardware and you'll see most of them completely failed. I figured I should leave these clips in here to show you that sometimes DIYing is just truly about trying, failing, trying, failing, but continuing on until you find that perfect solution. So first up, I had this gold wax that I thought I could rub all over the hardware and let set and that would be it. All the hardware pieces would look good as new. Quickly found out that that gold foil I had was actually not a true antique gold. It was like rose gold and totally not the right color. So that was my first round of applying paint thinner back onto the hardware pieces to get rid of that gold wax I just put on. Next, I thought I could use a trick that I used on my last DIY, which was using a gold Rust-Oleum spray paint to spray over some of the hardware. So I sprayed some of that spray paint into a little tub and started painting it onto the hardware to see if that would work. So at the beginning, I thought this looked really good. So I finished two whole sides of painting all the hardware before I realized it looked way too perfect. It took away some of that old vintage charm of just seeing some of the dents on the hardware pieces, seeing where some of the pieces weren't as gold or were a little bit rusted over. It just was looking way too perfect and I wanted to look authentic. So that was my second and longest round of putting paint thinner all over those hardware pieces and wiping away that spray paint. I finally realized that the only thing I needed to do to the hardware to make it look a little bit newer but keep that old vintage charm was to use that same spray paint, but only use it on the small circular bolts that ran all the way around the trunk. And believe me, it took a while because there are a lot of small circular bolts all over that trunk. But in the end, my choice to only paint those small bolts and leave the big pieces of hardware completely alone really made sure that the trunk kept its vintage feel while looking just a little bit more refreshed. Super glad I made this decision. Super not glad that I didn't think of it earlier. So then I got to work on the inside of the trunk. I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep that old lining and pattern or completely reline it or use new contact paper on the inside of it. So I actually did a quick poll on Instagram to see what you guys thought. There was a pretty big turnout to keep everything exactly the same. And I am thankful for that because in the end, it really lent itself to keeping that authentic feel for the truck. So big thank you to you guys. The only thing that I really did was of course vacuum up all the cobwebs that were inside that trunk. And then I used some Mod Podge all over the inside bottom of the trunk to make sure the paper didn't fall away when I knew I would have to drill some holes in it in the future. And then I was down to what I thought was going to be the last part of my project, which was installing those coffee table legs. I found another YouTube video that really explained how to add table legs to a trunk, and I will leave that link down below. But the basics of it is, is that the bottom canvas of the trunk is just way too small and flimsy to properly drill table legs into. So what you actually have to do is take two pieces of wood and sandwich the bottom canvas of the trunk and then you'll take your table legs and drill it into the bottom wood. This will ensure that your table legs will be super secure to your trunk 
and also that the bottom canvas of your trunk doesn't start breaking apart. Now this is definitely easier said than done, but I'll walk you through all the steps that I took. First, I started off by taking some scrap wood that I had and jigsawing it down to the lengths that I needed. In total, I needed four pieces of wood, two sandwiches on each side. I sanded those pieces of wood down and then I stained it to a very dark finish just to match the vibe of the trunk. So in the meantime, I actually found the perfect set of legs that would go with this trunk on Amazon and I'll leave the link down below. But the next step was really to take these legs and figure out where on the wood they would sit and where in relation to the trunk it would go. Again, this was a little bit of a trial and error situation, but what I ended up doing was using four screws to each sandwich of wood. And those four screws were really what would hold the pieces of wood to the canvas of the trunk. You'll see me in the process of drilling the holes into the wood and into the trunk, sandwiching the two pieces of wood on the bottom and on the top of the trunk, and really attaching those screws and using a nut to hold it in place from the bottom. time for me to attach my furniture legs to the pieces of wood. I pre-drilled those holes just like before and attached my legs. Just as a finishing touch, I also painted over those silver nuts and bolts that I was using to gold to match the rest of the hardware and the look of the piece. It's all about the details and the OCD, right? Now here comes my biggest mistake during this entire project. Oh yes, even bigger than trying to refinish that hardware two different ways. Let me show you guys what I just did. It's locked. I'll roll a clip of how exactly that happened here. Basically, I put the trunk on the side and accidentally squished this against the floor, and um, now it won't open. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but when I bought the trunk, it did not come with a key. I kind of just figured it wouldn't really lock on me and I wouldn't ever try and push the latch completely inwards just in case. So long story short, I ordered a set of lock picking tools, had Chumley try and help me pick locks, even though we've never done it before in our lives. And that was a complete fail. And then I got way too impatient and I used a bunch of screwdrivers to wedge into the latch and pry it open. I 100% broke the lock in the process, but I was so thankful that it was not locked anymore. I did my best to just touch up the latch a little bit. I mean, the trunk definitely still has the other two latches on it, so you can still keep it firmly closed and take it anywhere you need to, but I'm just hoping its next owners just don't keep a bunch of valuable stuff in there because you can't lock it. And after that long journey, we are here at our final product, my DIY vintage trunk coffee table. Honestly, I'm just so happy with the way it looks and even happier that I am done with it. I'm gonna be reselling it on Facebook Marketplace, possibly Etsy, and I hope it goes to a home that truly values the authenticity and vintage look that I was really going for. Please let me know if you enjoyed this DIY and if you like the fact that I kept that vintage look, or maybe if you would have preferred me to just completely redo it, paint over everything, let me know. 
Or if you have any other questions or tips for other people that are trying to refurbish furniture, leave them down in the comment section below. And don't forget to give me a like for all the blood, sweat, and tears that went into this project. And if you are enjoying any of my DIYs or finance videos, please don't forget to subscribe because I have a lot more videos planned for you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you and I hope you have an awesome day.